Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about scale models and scale drawings. Those two men are carrying a scale model jet past you and that's a scale model jet out on the runway. It's not nearly as big as a real jet. It's been reduced in size, but it's been reduced proportionately, so it's very similar to a real jet. Do you remember what proportional reduction and similarity is? You remember we talked about similar figures in an earlier lesson? Similar figures were figures that were proportional to each other, but either a reduction or an enlargement of the original. For instance, if we had a triangle that had uh, three sides, 2A, 2B, and 2C, and we wanted to create a similar triangle, we'd reduce those sides. We'd reduce them by the same amount, though. We'd take 2A, and we cut it in half, and we've got just A. And we take 2B and cut it in half, and we've got B. And we take 2C and reduce it to C. And this is similar to this. This is proportional to this. This and this are on scale. That scale means what's the growth factor of the sides. And in this case, if we're going from this one to this one, the growth factor is one half. Here's a scale train set. And everything, the cars, the houses, and the trains are proportional to the same things in real life. These are model boats. They're scale model boats and they're obviously much smaller than the real boats but they're to scale. And here's an expensive architect's model, a scale model, of a building he intends to build. With this model you can look at the building and really get a sense of what the finished product will look like. Architects also draw scale drawings. A, a scale model is a three-dimensional rendering of the original. A scale drawing is a two-dimensional. We just have height and width. And they make a drawing like this to help a contractor or a builder know how to build the house. It's a reduction of what the house will look like when it's built. And it's a proportional reduction. The size of the car porch relative to the size of the master bedroom should be the same in both the real house and this scale drawing. And you can see that the architect put a scale down here, 1 to 75. Maps are very common scale drawings. You use maps all the time. And they're scale drawings. This is a map of Florida and it's a scale drawing of the actual state of Florida. We couldn't get the actual state of Florida on a piece of paper, so we need to reduce it in size so that we can get it on a piece of paper. And we need to reduce it proportionately so that it still keeps exactly the same shape it had in the original. And we do that by drawing it to scale. On this map, the scale shown over here. That much distance equals 60 miles. Sometimes scales give you a little more detail than that. This one says that it's 10 nautical or statuette miles all the way across that bar, but then it breaks it up into five single units so that that would be three miles. Well, let's say we had this map of Florida and we're trying to figure out how far it is from Orlando to Daytona Beach. Could we do that? We know that it's proportional to the real state of Florida and we know the scale of proportion. It's given it to us on the map. So I think we could do this. We could put a ruler up there next to the scale and we discover that 2 inches equals 60 miles and 1 inch equals about 30 miles. Well then, if we were to measure the distance between Orlando and Daytona Beach, the ruler would tell us that that was a little over 1 and 3 quarter inches, let's say 1.8 inches, and 1.8 inches at a scale of 2 inches equals 60 miles 
would lead us to believe that it's about 48 miles in a straight line between Orlando and Daytona Beach. You try this one. Hit your pause button and when you get done with the problem, hit your forward key and I'll show you how to do it. You measure the distance from your house to State College and it measures 3.25 inches. What is the actual, as the bird flies, distance from your house to State College? And as the bird flies means it's a straight line between those two points, not the way you travel on a road, because a road's not going to run directly between State College and your house. You're going to have to go around some turns, so it's going to be less distance as the bird flies or in a straight line. And how would we solve this problem? Well, they tell us that there's one inch per 10 miles. So let's put that down first. And I put it down this way, 10 miles per one inch. That's the same as one inch per 10 miles. It doesn't matter which uh, order you put them in, other than you need to be consistent. And the reason I put the miles on the top over here is because I wanted the miles on the top on this side of the equation, because we're trying to solve for x, which is the distance between your house and state college. And if the x is on the top, it's going to be easier to solve this equation than if the x is on the bottom. You're going to save a step. So tr always try to get your variable, your unknown, on the top of these proportion problems. Now to solve this I gotta get rid of 3.25 inches so I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by 3.25 inches and 10 times 3.25 is 32.5 miles and that's the distance between your house and State College. Don't forget to hit the pause button This room is 10 feet long by 12 feet wide. Your father made a scale drawing of the room so you could plan where to put your furniture. On the scale drawing, the width of your room measures 6 inches. What scale did your father use for this drawing? Well, let's think about this. Your father has reduced the size of the room so he could get it on a piece of paper. He couldn't get a 12 foot dimension on a piece of paper, so he had to reduce it to make a scale drawing and he reduced that 12 feet to 6 inches. So what he's told you is his scale is there are 6 inches on the drawing per 12 feet in the real room. Now let's set it up that way. 6 inches per 12 feet. And that's really your scale. That right there is your scale. But it's customary to reduce it to a unit that's a little easier to work with than 6 over 12. So we're going to do that this way. We're going to say 6 inches over 12 feet equals how many inches over 1 feet. We're going to set those two proportions, and we're going to set that proportion as equal. And then we can take the dimensions out. And we can take the dimensions out only if we've set this up correctly. If we put inches over feet on both sides of the equation, for the time being we can just forget about the dimensions and change this to 6 over 12 and we can get rid of that foot dimension because we're not worrying about them right now and x over 1 equals just x. So x equals 6 to 12 and I can reduce 6 over 12 to 1 over 2. So x equals 1 half which means that you've got 1 half inch inches per 1 foot feet. We go back to the original way we set up the units, feet, inches over feet. I've got one half inch per one foot, or a ratio of one half inch per foot. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. Okay, we've got a scale drawing of a flower bed, and the scale drawing measures two inches by four inches and they tell us that the scale of the drawing is one inch equals five feet. What's the area of the real garden? Well we all know that to get the area we would multiply the length by the height or the width by the height but I gotta convert both that width and that height 
by this scale factor to turn them into feet because I want the area of the real garden. So let's do that one at a time. Let's start with the two inches. And I put my scale over here, five feet per one inch. They tell us that right there. There's five feet per one inch. And remember again, I'm trying to solve for feet, so I want my feet on the top of this. It'll make it easier to solve. So I say that five feet per one inch equals how many feet per two inches? Now to solve that, I gotta, I gotta multiply both sides of the equation by two to get rid of the two and isolate the x. And when I do that, I got x equals five feet times two over one or 10 feet. Five times two is 10. So that's one dimension. On the other dimension, I set up my scale the same way. I've got five feet per one inch and my feet are on the top because I want to solve for feet and that's equal to x feet per four inches. Four inches is the dimension on the drawing, on the scale drawing. And when I solve this, I multiply both sides by four and I get 20 feet. So now that I know the real garden is 20 feet by 10 feet and I can figure out the area. 10 feet times 20 feet equals 200 square feet. On this scale drawing, each square has a side width of one quarter inch. In other words, that's a quarter inch, that's a quarter inch, that's a quarter inch, and that's a quarter inch. What are the actual dimensions of the shape shown in the scale drawing? Well, we know it's drawn to scale, and here's the scale they drew it with. So now all we got to figure out is what that length represents and what that length represents. And we can do that right, right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight quarter inch sections. So it's eight times a quarter inch. And the other dimension, they have one, two, three, four, five. So it's five by a quarter inch because each one of those is a quarter of an inch. So that's <clears throat> 8 over 4 by 5 over 4, which is 2 inches by 1 and a quarter inches. That dimension's 2 inches, that's 1 and a quarter. Now, we know our scale is 1 inch for each of these inches. 1 inch equals 2, two feet. So 1 inch, 4 of those, is equivalent to 2 feet. So i got to multiply 2 feet times the 2 inches there, and I got to multiply 2 feet times the 1 and a quarter there, and I come up with the dimensions of the shape are 4 feet by 2 and a half feet. Well, that's our lesson on scale drawings and scale models. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the scale drawings and models worksheet and try your, try your luck there. Then go back to Master Math and try the quiz on scale drawings and models. And be sure to come back again real soon.